And what is this for again? <laughs> uh, we have a weekly show called DKE Toys TV. Why the fuck do you want me on the show? Why wouldn't we want you on the show? <clears throat> why, don't you, why don't you save it for the show? I thought this was the fucking show. It sort of is. <laughs> like what? what? Is that supposed to going to be some big countdown, and then you're going to do like, "Hey, everybody, welcome"? Is, to... is that okay That's with you? Exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, that is it. Do what you got to do to start, and then I'm ready. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Dub. Welcome to DKE Toys TV, episode 10, with our co-hosts here, Janky and Scott Cherry. Hey! And this week's guest, the Super Suck Lord. Whoop, whoop, whoop! For some inexplicable reason. <laughs> wow. That's why we have yeah, you here. Why do you want why am I on the show? What what am I what do you what could what possibly more is there to say on the subject? Like, I just did, like, a fucking 10-hour expose about every last fucking detail of my life and all the toy bullshit I could possibly ever discuss and disclose in any one individual person's lifetime. There's nothing left to say. What are you possibly going to get out of this? This is like an we hour and a half. need you to say right? it all on this show now. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't do well, it with Scott Cherry. Regurgitate all 10 uh, fucking hours <laughs> on this show. I mean, I'll go along with this, but I I don't see the point. So you're going to have to sell it. You know, you're going to have to get this rolling because I, I've run out of things to say about fucking toys. Well, thank so you, everybody. We'll see you next week. I mean, I'm sure we could talk about whatever the fuck it is you want to talk about. So start. What's good? What's up? What do I need to know? Wow. Um, okay. Well. How's it going? Fine. Everything's fine. Everything is, is exactly the same as it's been for a very long time. But now there's so, no chips and it's been fine. Hey, let's talk let's talk about potato chips yeah there's more chips involved i mean i've been just doing nothing but talking about potato chips not on like, this show so all not, right you're not so, gonna, so understand this you're not going to talk about potato chips you're going to talk about talking about potato chips okay you got it yeah all right fine but remember, you're also you're a guest host, so we have some other things to cover. You can comment or not, or you could just sit there and act disinterested and cool. Oh, it's not going to be an act. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I signed right, up I mean, for this abuse. Yeah, no, I mean, you knew what you were getting into. That's why I was like wondering why you wanted me to come on your nice little show and fuck it up. You know, we should have scheduled this before the, the 10 hours. <laughs> right. That was on Toys on Tap, and it's actually one of the most fascinating pieces of tape ever created in, in the history of human communication. And uh, it's an absolute mandatory listen to anybody walking this earth that cares about the human condition and art and meaning and purpose. And did you did you just do that right now? Or that was a while. No, nah, that came out that. last year, I think. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. There were but there not five... much is like I not a whole lot has changed since like I it was a fairly comprehensive conversation about my life story, such as it is. You had a and, five you had a five part show. Yeah, and they probably ran maybe hour and a half each. Yeah. So I've, that's I've good... listened to the first three. They're really a lot of fun, and I do recommend them for anybody yeah. listening. But this show this is our weekly show. It's not necessarily about you. You're just sort of participating. I'm just sort of on it. Okay, that's better. You're, yeah, you're this, on the this show. Isn't, this is your life. Yeah, we did. Is, we did our DK. So basically, and, what did what did Dove buy this week? And then we all go, "Oh, that's cool." <laughs> all right, it's fine. Wow, we can do I'm that. Retire. <laughs> <laughs> we can do. What did you buy this week? So hey, what's going on with you? Oh shit. 
Hey, Mr. Sucklord. Hey, you. Asshole, what's going on? At the moment, I'm sitting here sanding resin bootlegs figures, getting them ready to paint so I can get them to market. Which what is what grit do you use? <laughs> I use 220. I use the this blue wet sand. I used to like do one pass of 220 and then go back and do a second pass of 320, but you know, to smooth it out even further. But then I sort of realized that no one gave a fuck exactly how pristinely smooth the figures were. So I, I removed the 320 from the equation and it saves me a lot of time. Blue Wet Sand would also be a good name for an adult film that you could uh, shoot in your loft. Uh, yeah, it, it could it could be. It could be. Um, that's actually been going quite well, to be honest with you. Do tell. I've been like really low key making porn for the last three years. And it's like been like slowly, gradually building infrastructure and creating connections and generating content and it's like two seconds away from like going public so right. that's so really you, sort of where where my interests are so you've and been the, creating the content we can't see it right now like if we want to see your dick we can't go someplace and see it you can where does someone <laughs> go to to I watch mean, this sort of thing? currently i just have a couple of trailers up for some videos i shot on a on a i made a dedicated dedicated twitter page and um i'll show you do i want to see this? the twitter page <laughs> it's basically like i decided like if i'm gonna be making shit like this i don't i mean i'm gonna let people who follow me for my toys and for you know for my whatever the fuck else i'm doing i'm not gonna like hit them over the head with the shit because i know not everybody's gonna want to see it or is not gonna be interested in it but for those that are you know i decided to just make like a separate a social media account for it and i'm not even really gonna bother trying to shill this shit on instagram because it's just so absolutely censorous and restrictive and i don't want to lose my account you know i've already come up i've been put in instagram jail so many times it's like i just don't want to risk losing that account over this so i created a twitter page um with the spelling of suckadelic just slightly altered um and that's where I'm going to be like just sharing. This is a, some of the figures that are going to go with it. Because, of course, you know, I'm not going to they're going to there's going to be overlap. You have you the know? merchandise. Of course. Yeah, you need the you need the figures. So you can reenact it at home afterwards. Well, maybe. But I mean, what I am <laughs> noticing as I've been immersing myself in the adult market for a while now, I started going to the porn convention in Vegas, a AVN or AE uh, since 2019. And what I'm, you know, I was there shilling um, action figures of some specific porn performers for this company called Wood Rocket. And what I'm really noticing is like they have just as many dedicated fans, like real hardcore porn fans, like like just like Star Wars has or any other type of fandom. But the porn biz really doesn't have their merch game up to speed, you know, as compared to like other other fandoms. You know, like if you're a porn fan, there's not a lot to buy. There's not a lot of stuff. And if it is, it's all sort of throwaway items. They don't have, you know, like hats, a pen, an autographed picture. You know, Wood Rocket got a little bit more creative with like coloring books and enamel pins and stuff like that. But as far as like memorabilia goes, <clears throat> there just really isn't much there, you know. And Mostly I just print like on demand. You would, you would think with, you know, the way the world is going with media that like media basically has to be free these days that they someone in that community would have thought like, hey, how do these individual stars, you know, merchandise themselves like, like the same as like reality TV stars like, you know, they're on a show, but then they have a site where they sell all their garbage and that's yeah. th how they really make their money. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I but the thing is like. They're just not, and people do do that. They're just not that creative yet in like the type of shit that they make. And I just feel like coming from the toy world, that gives me sort of like a a, a, a new a new eye on things. So it's just like, it's going to be interesting just trying to see um, like how that plays out. Like uh, my, my, I just shot a video uh, of my girlfriend who's a uh, an adult performer uh, shaving off um, her pussy hair. 
and we're going to sell the hair. <laughs> but like normally, if somebody was going to do that, you know, when people do <laughs> do that, you know, they <laughs> sell their panties. Sorry, but they just sort of put it in a plastic bag with like a little autographed picture. I got it hooked up so it's like in a branded package, like a, a clamshell where it opens up and there's a little thing with the hair in it. But then it's got the picture and the logo and all the text. You know, it looks like one of like a toy package. And it's just like it looks like a collectible. You're not you using know? actual hair on figures, like make a figure of her and I mean no, I mean I would don't I it feel like it's flocking. Some... Cases that maybe not Flock. necessary. Yeah, I mean, I've done that. I've done flocks Flock with some hair. I made that, made that 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 Madonna figure a bunch of years yeah. ago. Oh yeah, right, but, yeah. But you didn't flock pussy with pussy hair. I mean, I just used regular flops <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, or pussy hair. But I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if it's even necessary to go through all of that extra work to make the figure when i can just sell the hair by itself yes yeah, so, i mean if you're if people are buying farts in jars and bath water and stuff someone's gonna buy hair yeah it's oh. just, i just feel like i mean that stuff is there i just feel like coming from this world i got the whole packaging aspect down which <clears throat> they don't have you know so yeah it's gonna okay. be interesting to see i don't know i don't know where it's going it's just fun it's just fun for me and it's just like i just feel like there's stuff that's been that's undone in that space and I just feel like, you know, it's like it's it combines a lot of my interests. That's a bold statement. What? <laughs> that there's not a whole lot of stuff that's not been done in that space. I've seen a lot well, of shit. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of shit too, but there's also a lot of shit that I had that I haven't seen. Or at least I just feel like whatever I I feel like I'm probably just gonna wind up doing the same thing in the porn world that I'm did in the toy world which is just came in as a complete odd bowl that didn't fit in anywhere and just sort of carved a path for themselves and managed to just like exist in that space without actually being fully absorbed by it you know i just feel like i mean at this point i feel more of an adjacent appendage to the toy industry than any actual part of it you know so i feel like in the porn space you know i have an i have a unique voice you want to be a legitimate group. appendage. We'll see. We'll see. You have to have a legitimate appendage to be a legitimate appendage. So. There's I a mean, I don't know how there. legitimate the appendage is. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not one, it's not like it's not gonna sell it, you know. <laughs> on its those merits alone. On appendage, on appendage alone, right. Yeah, but I also think that there may be there's some angle to the fact that, like, hey. You're watching a guy that looks like you doing it. You're not looking at some big fucking giant alpha male, big dick monstrosity that, you know, that you could never be. You're just looking at somebody that looks like you, a weird dude with a regular sized dick, short guy, you know. The toy you know, collection doing in the back. <laughs> yeah, toy collection in the back. I mean, there's going to be a lot of overlap between the Trying toys to jerk off there. and you're like, dude, what? what? I don't have that. <laughs> it could be, it could be, it could be a complete failure, but it's just something I've been compelled to do, and this it's been a long. Not how this, how I envisioned this interview going. This is exactly how I envisioned it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. We can change yeah. the subject now because there's not a lot more to say on it right now. It's like I'm going to start promoting this shit over the next weeks and months, and and we're just going to see what happens. It could be a total, it could be a total bust for all I know. I but actually, I've been you know, compelled... one, I have one question: Is is there enough? money in it to keep floating in the in the age of you know uh like Pornhub and and, and only fans and well people pay for only fans right but as if that goes directly to the performer so if you're creating like a label yes. and a, you know, a middleman is there is, and i this is a legitimate question it's not a uh you know not yeah you're being snarky janky i'm not i'm really curious no, no, no. what what it. uh we'll see if there's money in it i mean you can't I, you know i've already made a few hundred bucks off my only fans you know, and that's from not oh. promoting it at all. Right. You know, I, there's like a handful of videos there and, and uh, here on there and, and I've never promoted it. But here and there on certain live streams, I've let it slip that it existed. And a bunch of gay dudes went and looked it up. And, <laughs> you know, so and that's been happening. That's happened sort of like as a very small little trickle over the last couple of years. I made it on th during the pandemic and I pulled a, maybe 300 bucks out of it. You know, without having to really do anything, 
So but we'll see. The other question we'll I have is like, are there porn collectors? Are there people who want like a physical shrine in their home, like the way like action figure collectors are? Like, because most of those yeah. people, like, they're like, look at my this and look at my that. And I think there might be like some shame associated with like their porn collection. Like, they have to keep but it like, somewhere say, yeah. where other people can't <laughs> see it, you know. Oh, uh, we'll find out. I mean, it's like, again, there isn't enough shit out there in the world to really make like a proper shrine, like a say a Star Wars collector would make. Mm -hmm. But, you yeah, know, there's guys that do collect things and they're proud of having them and they probably share them with their porn buddies. Like I was just I'm at being at the porn convention for two years in a row and just looking at the type of people that attend. It's all stripes of people and they're just they don't give a fuck i mean they're willing to they're there you know they're out in public you know celebrating their fandom of porn you know they don't give a fuck i mean i think i think yeah but they're there are it's, not, it's not like those th those but they're people, at a porn convention yeah they're like, yeah they're the the t-shirt that they buy are they going to wear that to work? Morning to the to the office, yeah. yeah, or even to the grocery store. I, you know yeah. that I don't know, and it's all remains to be seen. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like there's certain, like that type of person, maybe isn't fully d defined yet. You know, because of just the way porn is perceived in in the in the, in America, and just how people do tend to keep it secret or separate or don't talk about it. But I also think a lot of attitudes are shifting. I mean, that's why I'm kind of interested in getting into it just because I feel like we are on the cusp of a, of a sort of like vibe shift when it comes to just like how people talk about and, you know, engage with this type of stuff. And it's like coming more and more into, into the light and it's not like living under a rock. And there's like a lot of political free speech stuff that goes along with it, which I also find very interesting. You know, the way people that, the way the people that who make this stuff are, marginalized you know on social media and in the banking system and in all kinds of ways it's really really unfair and it's just i just feel like there's like a lot of movement in that space and it just it just seems it just seems ripe for exploration just because i'll be honest with you the toy shit is just not going anywhere for me you know i've been doing this shit for almost 20 years and I'm not much, I'm not materially, materially much different than I was when I started. You know, I still don't work for Hasbro. I still don't have deals. I, nothing's happening. For Do me. you want to work for Hasbro? I mean, I can't work for Hasbro. There's nothing for me to do at Hasbro, but I don't have a deal. I'm not like making shit. I'm not designing shit. Nobody wants to put my stuff into mass production. I'm not being offered shows. I'm not being offered anything. It's like I'm just out here by myself catering to my small little fan base. And it just has not opened any doors recently. You know, I mean, it's been it's been a great ride, but it just look, it it's going really to it's going to take time. Um, I mean, it's all... been taking time. What else yeah. could happen that hasn't happened already in this yeah. bootleg toy world? But you got to remember that a lot of the people that are into your work are younger than you. And so what happens is they're 20 now. And in 10 years, when they're 30, they have a job where, and this has already happened to you, where someone has a job and they try to float something your way or get their company to do something with you because of who you are. So it really, that you know, and then of course, the most success will come after you're dead, unfortunately. But um, I, I think... I think if you give it time, it it will happen. Um, that there will be more passive income. I don't know what it is. Let's not talk about it. Let's just say that there will be more passive income and more opportunities to create for the sake of creating that you get compensated for. I also but, don't think I don't there's anything wrong with a mode so. shift, though, too. Like, you know, the, the art comes from the artist. So whatever you decide to create is what you're creating. You know, people are going to follow you on the journey you go on, and it may work and it may not. But, you know, toys is just one of the tools in your toolbox. Is the is the tool that you helped invent? <laughs> you know, it's the zine you helped create, but it's just one of the tools in your toolbox. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It just um, we'll see. But I mean, to to your point, Dove, like that that conceivably would have been true twenty years ago. 
when I first began doing this. So like you would think in the first 10 years, you would have seen that happen. And now we're coming up on the second 10, 20, 10 years. You think it would have happened again. I mean, people who were buying my shit when they were 20, 20 years ago are fucking 40 now. So do they, they what, what happened? The thing, the fucked up thing about this stupid bootleg shit is what once a fan becomes ripe, you know, they don't suddenly start spending more money on you. They suddenly decide to start their own toy operation and start making their own shit we yeah, see it all the time i mean we have customers and then they start making their stuff and they're like yeah. hey can you sell my toy okay we talk them through the process and then they cease being a customer and they start being a creator and that's fine too like all the people who are collecting your stuff early on are not collecting anymore there are cycles um you keep doing this to keep um you know garnering a new fan base and uh, just you're constantly promoting, which is what you're supposed to do. And you also haven't had um, yet, it hasn't been enough time yet for the people who were collecting you originally to start to become nostalgic for your work 20 or 30 years later, right? And well, then I mean, how do you become to... nostalgic for something that has just been plowing forward and been in your face relentlessly every single fucking day? I mean, uh, I think one I, of the I, issues is that it's just too available and it's too common and it's too, it's sort of taken for granted. Like, oh, the fucking suck lord. He's so relentless making figures. He's always going to be there. There's no urgency to like collecting it. There's always going to be more. And it's like, maybe, you know, at some point I think it would be nice for myself and for everybody if some, it's a little space put between, you know, between it. And um, there's there's definitely a lot of gallerists out there who, once they start working with an artist, start encouraging them to make less and to make fewer pieces for more money so that they can start promoting their work to, you know, all of their douchey people that, you know, do whatever they say. So, well, that's rough. but I, I want to point look, an, a, at, another at, issue, one, one more issue is like just a life choices that you've made. Right. So you've decided to live in New York and pay two rents, one on a studio and one on a place to live. And right. had you been living in, I don't know, virtually anywhere else in the country, um, you would be making a lot of money relative to your cost of living. You would probably own a home and a car and all that kind of stuff. And you've made a conscious choice to be where you are. We've talked about this a lot. And mm -hmm. You said that that informs your work and that's part of who you are. So that, that's sort of like a decision you've made. But if um, to have lasted 20 years as an artist in New York, doing what you've been doing, uh, most people go to New York for a couple of years. They're like, I went to New York and I want to do, you know, they do their New York thing until they're broke and then they go back home. And sure. Well, I so, mean, I don't have New York is I came back to New York when I went broke. You know, so there's nowhere <laughs> sure. to go back to, you right. know, and like, you're right. No, I mean, I have sort of like set myself up. I set myself up to, you know, that, that I would have a high cost of living. And, you know, even though it's been a struggle, and it's been difficult. And sometimes I do kind of question like, you know, what if I had done something differently? I really don't regret it because what I what I don't have, like materially and financially, like just being here in the center of everything, you know, in the place where that, where I get, you know, I get my energy from and I get my, in, in, you know, inspiration from like, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I was living in some suburban area or I was living in Minneapolis or something like that, I would be a completely different person. And I just, you know, I don't regret like doing it. It's like, I mean, and nor, nor should you, I, I think my point is that you should be proud of that that um, I, I that, am proud of it but it's also like it's not I can't it, just keep it is doing in it itself an accomplishment yeah thank you I know but uh, some 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 shake up would be interesting you know if I I'm, I'm still I have no idea it's like I've become so used to just like doing this as my job which is a blessing if this is like my I always say like if this yeah. is my toil I'm doing fine. Like if this is the worst thing I have to do in life is sit here and make action figures, then I'm probably doing okay. But it would really be, I have no idea what my creativity in this space would look like if I wasn't, if I was doing it purely for my own entertainment. Like it's always a financial consideration. 
and I don't of know course. what it would be. I don't know what I would be doing. But if also, I didn't you, have to make money also you it. you don't have to have another job, which most no. artists, ninety nine percent of artists in the world, do something else most of the time. You right. are in the in the very. I know you're complaining, but I'm just trying to. I'm not. I'm not complaining. I mean, Listen. I'm very. Th I'm thankful for what I have. I'm thankful for what I've accomplished. I'm just a little frustrated because it's like it's kind of very repetitive now and it's like i would like to stir things up a little bit and the truth of the matter is i only have this space for another year and a half and mm -hmm. and then what i don't entirely know minneapolis uh i might i don't i, I really don't know <laughs> i really don't know but is something happening to the building or you have to the renew lease, your the lease? lease the lease is gonna run out and then and... you can't sign you can't sign a new lease it might not be available again. Yeah. It might not be available. Did the owners change? No, but they have big plans for the building, uh, supposedly. And like every time the lease is running out, they've always been playing this game of we don't know if we're going to give it again. You know, they've been doing that since we like since we've renewed the lease here like three times, two, mm -hmm. two, three times. And also it's a subletter. I'm letting I'm I'm renting from somebody who rents the floor. And then he rents out the individual studios to people. Mm -hmm. He might not want to do it anymore, yeah. you know. So I don't. It's just gonna. It's just like a big question mark. So I'm. I'm acting as if, is you know, clear, that it, is, is that guy clearing money every month? No, he's losing money. No, I mean, I think he gets his studio for free. He gets a free. He he it, it, he makes enough profit that he doesn't have to pay. Uh, for the rent on his studio yeah. that's but pretty like sig that's that's pretty significant yeah but i mean he does a lot you know and he shoulders a lot of fucking it's a it's a big deal and he has another building that he does the same thing over there and he's not he's not like bawling you know and he's a really nice generous guy and he's not like trying to get rich you know and i think he's like does the best he can to keep everybody's rent as low as possible and he doesn't fetch when I'm late. And it's like, he, I mean, I really think he does it just because he wants to create studios for artists because he's a true believer. And if he, you know, and he should get something from it, you know, but, you know, he's not like cleaning up. Hmm. So, but I don't know. It'd be, I mean, I, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm thinking that I'm, that's why I'm sort of working on other shit, trying to finish my Toy Lords of Chinatown movie and sort of like wrap up some of these some of these last projects and then it'll be interesting to see what happens if there's like a big shakeup. but i don't know it's, what it's sorry but toy lords is not finished there's still more yeah didn't you watch the last episode it just ends on this raging cliffhanger i just and thought I, that, that i thought that that was just like can't be where, where it ends yeah <laughs> no not at all <laughs> oh wow because no, you had the big screening going. remember you had everyone and like you showed it all and then it was like well yeah was... but i would i did that every i did that when I, I put out the third and the fourth episode i did a big screening and i've been working on the fifth episode for the last fucking seven years that's like when one comes out a decade you have a party here. that's <laughs> <laughs> well it's just like i i sketched out a story i wanted to tell and I mm -hmm. wanted to also just make a point to like shoot it and capture it or extract it from the environment that I'm living and working in and have the people that I that are in my life and the people that are part of my creativity in it. And it just as it went, it just got a little bit more involved and complicated than had originally been envisioned. And then it started the to become like a, a little okay. bit unwieldy, but it's just like I just I have to do it. I have to do it. It's just like it doesn't make any money. Nobody cares about it, really. It's never going to be a hit. It's really kind of not very good, to be honest with you. And <laughs> and it's just like, it's just something I need to do for my own edification. I consider it more of like a personal journal than anything else that just sort of describes in a you know, mildly fictionalized manner, like what my life in this, this life was. You know, because it's not it's it's not going to always be this way and I'm not going to be always living like this. And it'll just be fun to just have that little thing there that that sort of tells that story. And then maybe somewhere down the line in the future, when there's greater context available, it'll it'll make sense as to why why I did it and what I was trying to say. But right now I'm just trying to do it just because I'm I'm personally obsessed with it, but it's hard to get to. 
you know, it's hard to get around. That's the best reason to do it. Yeah, it's just frustrating because it's like it's hard to make the time and organize everything and plan these things out and shoot it, you know, with so much else going on. But, you know, I'm persevering and I'm, you know, I really want it. I got an idea planned to shoot in this room here, you know, because I shot a bunch of shit in my old studio and I have all kinds of stuff in these videos that doesn't exist anymore. I have the old Kid Rock, Kid, Kid Robot store both locations of the old toy tokyo my plastic heart is in this upcoming episode like all these places that don't exist anymore wound up in there you know and i did that on purpose because i knew all of this shit was not going to last and i wanted to get it down for posterity i mean even just shooting around chinatown you know this neighborhood has changed so dramatically since i've been down here and a lot of the stuff and sets and backgrounds and environments that I shot in are comp- are transformed to the point that you wouldn't recognize them anymore. I mean, everything is becoming high end and luxury, you know, and I'm like filming in places like right, like there's construction behind me. And I'm like, we got to get this shot of this like sort of run down little alleyway here because they're about to fucking bulldoze everything and put up a condo here. So let's go. And, you know, that's sort of what it's been about. And it's one of those type of things that I don't think will really truly make sense until way later. There's something super then, interesting about that. Like there's this movie called Dangerous Men. By this yeah. Guy, and he shot it over the course of like, same thing, like 25, 30 years. And over the course of the movie, obviously people come in and out. So actors change, roles change. You see the technology changing as he's shooting. Like it starts out really crappy and then it gets a little better and then it gets even worse because it's better and he doesn't know how to use it. And like there's something really fascinating about that as a film. I love that movie. So there, like you describing Toy Lords like that, there's this whole second layer to it that I think could really live on, you know, have a second have a second uh, life there. Yeah, like what'd you I mean, shoot the first episode on? What what was the format? What do you mean the format? Uh, like, I shot it on just this little digital mini camera. DV. Yeah, probably. Yeah. No, we're just shooting. I was shooting right to this. Yeah, to a disc to like a, a disc but it all had to be like it, it created these really weird native files that had to be exported and it's all and i and it just fucked up because at the time when i started shooting it most camp the cameras and even youtube was in three four aspect ratio so i'm still shooting in three four you know or rather <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting in 16 9 and then i'm then i'm and then then and then i'm dropping yeah cropping it in yeah then i'm letterboxing it or i'm just like because i can't be going back and forth so it's just i'm committed to having it be in three four and it's fucking stupid but <laughs> i love that we started with this episode with you saying you had nothing to say i have nothing to say about toys <laughs> and we didn't that's funny <laughs> i got plenty to say about other things <laughs> i mean the well, thing for me these toys were always supposed to be just sort of like a stepping stone to something else it was never supposed to be the thing and now it's the it's been the thing for a very long time, and well, let's take care of some business here. I'm going yeah. to show everybody a few psychedelic pieces that we have on the site. On sale now! Oh, everybody's seen this bullshit. <laughs> uh, we're hoping that there's some new fans that don't know who you are that are now like you know putting a face to a whatever. Um, so those gay empires are on the site right now. We also, um, oh, I'll show you this one right here. This one's called Bootleg Gold. This one's signed by the Suck Lord and Lou Pimentel. And we also have this one. These are things that we have regularly, Licorice Leslie here. But we also have a bunch of pieces that we buy back from collectors in collections because we do that oh, really? often. And we have this one here. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool classic part of the cowboy series that series was great the cowboy series yeah, that was fun uh we have the suck lord 70 oh that was from toy lords 2 see look at that vintage and then probably <laughs> my favorite era of suckadelic oh interesting how how are those holding up condition wise i mean these look fine Every once in you know, if something breaks, uh, there's there have been times where we've carefully had to like remove tape and do a repair. Um, but you That's know, cool. for the most part, uh, seems pretty good. Uh, these, uh, 
you know, these black and white laser copies on the colored paper, uh, I think this era, and especially this series with the 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 dice. The polyhedral heads. The polyhedral heads. There you go. Uh, we have another one, too. We have Tyros. What was the other? What's the other one? It was like time wasters of the infinities. Chronos, yeah. <clears throat> Just... yeah. I mean, I still add to that series every once in a blue moon. I know. Mm. We have Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles. God, who the fuck bought that to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> you could spend that money on Roscoe's. All right, and then check that one out. Ooh, yeah, very cool. Um. What else can we talk about here? And all that shit is for sale on your website. It, it's on sale. Right are any now. of these left of, or did these all sell out the the baby tattoo? Uh, I think there's a there are a couple of those. We did get a handful of the baby tattoo bill pieces. Yeah. Um, and this is the, this sort of the affordable standard for those of you just starting out. This is the Sucklord seventy two. Also the Gay Empire. They're forty bucks. So if you want something inexpensive, um, okay. So. Next month, uh, we'll be starting a Kickstarter for this little box right here. Sweet. Um, it is the reject kit. It says here that you're an asshole for buying it. And it's kind of a, a fun little thing that uh, we created with here. Uh, with the suck lord, rather. You you could bleep that if you want. Um, Nobody cares. <laughs> you, well, you sure do. Yeah, I said that's what I said. Nobody cares. So why wow. self-esteem here today is just remarkable. So hey, it's part of the it's part of the brand. Right. Suckler here has had a, a line of reject figures over the years where he has taken broken figures. And uh, so he designed this card. Like these. And it says by decree hey. of the super sucklord, your toy has officially been rejected. There's a little story on the back and creative little dude here um, actually went to the files online of the patent office and found the Boba Fett patent and modified it. Um, and so the, the idea of this, uh, while this is a fun kit to collect and keep it in its box in mint condition, if you want, you can also take any other figure that you uh, find, chop off its head, and you can make your own. Uh, I guess I'll read you the direction. Because I think the directions are the best part that he. Uh... You don't have one of these in it near you. It would be better if you read it, but I'll read it. I it says don't. take. It says take one of the shitty resin figures you made all by yourself. Drill a hole in the neck so the peg in the head fits. The peg is a weird size, so good luck finding the right drill bit. Paint the figure in some kind of style that you think is your own, but really isn't because you have no style. Number four, put the peg in the head through the hole in the cape. So it comes with a little bag here with a cape and a little sucklord head. Glue your fucking mouth shut while you're at it and your friend's eyes too so they don't have to look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shove the fucking thing up your ass and leave it there for several hours. Take it out of your ass. Don't clean it. Lay it on the card right here. Uh, so then you put you put the bubble on top. So you put the figure in there. Do, do, do. And then it comes with a roll of tape. And then it has a branded like fake Posca marker that he designed called Poser. Ah, that's and then, awesome. And then you do your little <laughs> do 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 little spoogy thing. And then you fill out the the fun little um certificate. And you say I and you put the name of Suckler Ripoff Artist. So you put your name there. It says, have made a piece of redundant, pandering, plagiarizing garbage entitled, and then you title it. And it says, this document certified it as rejected by the Super Suck Lord, and he has kindly signed it for you. I have also witnessed it as the DKE Toys, the enabler. And then you sign it and date it. And then you've sort of collaborated with the Suck Lord. You've taken your art and like <laughs> put it into his universe. <laughs> and it's so much fun. And then you get a whole bunch the of other stuff. Cynicism is just astounding. You got a little sticker. <laughs> what was that? The cynicism is just astounding. I'm I'm stunned at just the the bitterness and just <laughs> the just sort of rejection of 
of decency. It's just like it's so it's so negative. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at, Poor look guy. At the... What made him so angry? Why is he so angry? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do uh, and... like an archive of those? Are you going to have like a submit your figures and have a website with everybody's shitty figures up on it? Uh, well, hopefully we, we did the last part of the direction is to hashtag it so that we can see it. Um, so we're going to be offering the kits uh, and then uh, a little bit of a discount for a quantity of kits. So if you're an artist and you wanted to buy 10 or 20 kits to make your own additions, you can do that. And then for people who are not uh, that handy, we've found a bunch of uh, rejects around here that people have sent us. Oh, and, God. And then so th these will be available too. Just wait till you see all the awesome artists that are going to say that they collaborated with you. <laughs> okay, but here, <laughs> what the you're going to love that, get, dude. What do I get out of this? You're going to love that. I don't even get the fucking credit, for God's sake. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody fucking okay. knows. Okay. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you, talking about people who collaborated, uh, we got 10 other artists to donate oh, yeah. their their figures. I'm going to collaborate with the Suck Lord. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, and so these, so in addition to, so the the kits and some pre-made figures, there's also the higher end pre-made figures that um, come with signed certificates uh, by, let's see, what are the 10 artists? We have uh, Ron English, Frank Kozik, Mike Egan, Killer Bootlegs, Carlos Ramirez, Mark Todd, Scott Wolkowski, Luke Chu, Luke Chu Scott, C. Scott C, Jim Mafud. So those 10 artists have uh, graciously signed their certificates, uh, and those will be sort of some of the higher end pieces for the Kickstarter, where I think we'll have maybe 10 or 15 from each of those artists available. I so already got paid for this, didn't I? <laughs> wow uh you, you, you got paid for the design work you did along the way and then you do have some product coming Ooh, product great okay cool well um, those are some good artists i must say you did pretty good yeah getting it's some, some, some high level yeah. guys up in there yeah mm -hmm. we tried i mean those are sort of like our I'm going to say like our in-house roster of regular people that we work with and make figures with. So um, we had, obviously. And unfortunately, had, that's going to be the final Kozik suck word piece. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So maybe that'll make the money at least. Well, we can talk about that another day. Oh, he's gifted us one last, one well, last hit. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, on that somber note, now it's time for what you dub by. Hey, dude, what'd you get? So let's just talk about like vapid collecting shit. Look at this figure <laughs> I love that, it, I, yeah. that I got from Hong Kong. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, this is from a company called SpaceMars.hk on Instagram. They make these little vinyl guys. This is an edition of thirty. They made a, a Luke in, in a white outfit. And this is the most recent one in the Jedi outfit. But the thing that I got at DesignerCon, which is just so epic, was this guy right here. Oh, oh wow. Damn. And it was just, it, like, I had one left. They, they've oh, actually, that's fucking awesome. It's called Darth Machine. And I'm going to re reveal it for you right now. Um, and it just it has everything that I want in a toy. <laughs> so cool. I mean, <laughs> wow. Look at that thing. That's amazing. I, I gotta think it was like 200 bucks. Uh, wow. The arms move. They have other colors of it. I wanted the most most like Darth Vader. Is that is that about the same size as a jumbo? How tall is this? This 18 inches or is this 24? Uh, it looks about it. Is that uh, if this is nine Shogun's jumbo two feet, right? Like yeah, Shogun, like a yeah. jumbo machine or well, shogun. It's, it's like two it's about, feet, right? Shogun it's warriors. A little yeah. shorter. This is twenty-four inches, so about four inches no, shorter. No, it's twenty. This is this is twenty. They were saying that like uh shogun was 
Show 24 them. inches, right? 24, yeah. Well, that's wow. great, Dub. Congratulations. That's really <laughs> awesome. Isn't, isn't it cool? Aren't you jealous? Yeah, it's way cool. No, yeah, I wish I had that in my house. <laughs> do you do you collect? What do you have in your collection? I don't really collect. Pterodactyls. Um, I like acquire things, but like I'm not like, oh, I'm seeking out a specific series of things and I need to get all of them and I'm like waiting for the next one to come out and I need all of it. It's just like I just sort of get little things piecemeal here and there that I like. And I have like a I have a few shelves in my house that just have piles of stuff sitting on them that I like, but it's not like there there's like no real rhyme or reason to it. I just like sometimes I really like weird off brand shit. Like I don't even know what it is. And I find yeah. it in like a bin and I'm just like, yeah, I'll take this. You know. But now I don't I don't and I don't really, you know, sweat it that much. I don't like I like having the toys around the house, especially when like girls come over. But um because they love to suck your dick while you tell them great all the great <laughs> details about it. The history of Chewbacca. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I had a girl over here fucking herself with uh, some vintage figures, and she fucking squirted all over this Chewbacca toy. She <laughs> fucked herself with a Greedo and a Chewbacca, and she said the Chewbacca was way better. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And I saw, and I didn't wash them. I was gonna and say, I, I bet that now they're dude. This, the that's shelf. the fucking market right there, dude. <laughs> there's the cross section. You go look. This girl masturbated with this Chewbacca toy. Here's you the pack for it, you know, dude. This, the Chewbacca. Greedo, Chewbacca. She said the Greedo was so, weird. You know that head that, with all the head with all the little things sticking out. Yeah. I can imagine that. I would think. So I figured I'd get. I maybe might just do that as a thing, Dove. I was actually going to hit you up for some beaters. And like, I would just be like, get the original 12, right? And then just do each one. And then she can decide which one feels better. Or she could try to, if she's like, knows her shit, she can, <laughs> she can blind stick them in her vagina and then try to uh, guess which one it is. R2D2 will be easy, but the other ones could be tricky. Like, <laughs> this is definitely a General Maydeen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Mon Mothma. Wow, <laughs> I think you're onto something here, man. Yeah, I, I know. I know. <laughs> His new meaning the blind box. Hey, uh, I, I couldn't. Nah, remember. but like, I mean, um, you could just call them beaters. Like, that's yeah, beater. That's a good beater. Yeah, that's, good thing. that's a good one. Well, look at that. There you so go. You, I've given back to you now. The you've circle. left here with some encouragement. <laughs> It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. I can't like just. It's going to be funny. <laughs> it's going to be funny because it's just like. Everybody thinks about this kind of shit. It's just nobody's I do been now. To, You're actually going to actually <laughs> do it and, and actually, you know, risk their risk, their reputation <laughs> such as to, you know. On, on dumb shit like this but I, I had a really good friend who somehow got a copy of super hornio brothers which is like a terrible 90s mario porn oh yeah i saw that yeah, it's yeah. really <laughs> rare <laughs> oh wait no i was saying the, the there's a video game where there's like a mario with a oh yeah no this is this is a video it's a movie and it's really rare and it's really hard oh, it's to porno. get and he got it and sold it for like three grand so there is a market of people buying weird rare porn shit you know like these are I remember, these are, I these are vhs watching, tapes this was a vhs tape and yeah, like well, this movie is really hard to find but but i'm saying there's people out there that are willing to spend three thousand dollar on on something that's weird and different and rare and porn and porn we, we so, used to watch beaver and butt face <laughs> it was like a beavis and butthead they had like these weird like can i stop knots. you for a second yeah who's we uh well, I used to work at a video store, and I had the, the porno section in it, and my brother would come in, and, dude, he came out with the box, and he's like, we gotta, dude, he's like, we gotta watch this. And, uh, we did. And, uh... <laughs> Sibling bonding. <laughs> it, was, it was more of like a party thing. There was a lot of people there. I wasn't sitting there watching pornography with my twin brother. <laughs> but you can watch... <laughs> watch uh beaver and butt face on youtube they uh they edited out the porno uh wow. but, so, so they're actually see... talking in the movie what's that 
Beavis and Butthead are actually fucking chicks in the movie. Yes. Not very and realistic. Like, <laughs> but that goes but also, they, um, like, they would watch videos and make commentary on them. And oh. Beaver and Buttface, they would watch pornography. And oh, that's a good. They that's a great idea, actually. Commentary through that. No, I want to watch Beaver and Butt. What? Buttface? But what was it? Beaver and Buttface. Yeah. Hmm. Amazing. There All we right. Go. Well, on that note, uh, Mr. Stucklord, do you want to tell people where they can find you on social media? Absolutely not. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you out there, the uh, name please... Sucklord. The name Sucklord. It's it's easy to remember. It's wow. easy to. Remember. Why is this over already? Uh, sh- <laughs> short and sweet. That's what we like it. All right. Uh, yeah. No. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. I mean, I haven't been to therapy in a while, so uh, this was helpful. <laughs> Did this count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In a way. I mean. Yeah. I mean, just letting me. You know. S- you know, Fetch vocalize what's going on inside my head, you know, to like rational people such as they are. Um, <laughs> say. Right. <clears throat> it's helpful. Yeah, it's helpful. It's helpful. I mean, I could probably use a lot more therapy, but um, it's 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 OK. It'll do. I'm sure therapists in New York are pretty penny. Yeah. They love me, though. <laughs> you ever feel like they should be paying you yeah you know one of them's just writing a screenplay based on everything well, I, I sometimes i feel like i'm putting on a show and it's like and i'm like i'm not going there with any like real serious traumas and abuse and like heavy shit that would, is emotionally taxing to have to you know help somebody unpack and that God bless people that do do those things. I mean, my my problems are largely existential, and it's like, it's and I'm interesting, you know, and like I actually, well, I can articulate what's going on in my mind, and I'm entertaining. And I was going to see this one woman, and I just really thought like it was the highlight of her fucking week. <laughs> you know, I'm just there doing my little show, and then I pay her on 150 bucks, and after I, you know, sort of had some breakthroughs for the you know the initial issue that sent me there in the first place i'm like what why the fuck am i still coming here so i did it but now i have new new concerns so i need but so i want to go back but yeah, it's about maintenance more as much as it's about breakthrough so yeah that's true too but you know it's just it like 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 dove said it's there's a, quite a demand here for therapy and probably in la too and it's it's expensive, yeah. You know, a lot of insurance doesn't cover it. Have you tried dropping LSD? Yeah. Yes, like I have. That? It's not that I don't like it as a thrill ride, but it's more just like I don't know if it's doing any work for me as far as my, like, wellness is concerned. It's just like, you know, it's just creating – it's just confusing after a while. Like, I've done it enough times to I feel like I've – I, I saw what that particular drug wants wanted to show me. And then that continuing to do it is just sort of just like going back to the same class. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if that's what I need right now. Why? What about you? You do you do do you do LSD? Yeah, I like LSD. You still do it on do you do it regularly or often yeah, enough? Yeah, I, 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 no, maybe once or twice a year. After taking Under, a like, long what, break. Under like what kind of conditions do you take it usually? Like you like to uh, do you, it outside in nature, or you lock yourself in your room, or you do it alone. Yeah, I'm not a nature guy. No, I do it with my twin brother. <laughs> and we Yet do another like you activity. Do a lot with your fucking twin <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Sounds like you do a lot with your twin brother. I do. That's nice. It must be nice to just have like a other self that's like you, it's but amazing. not you. Yeah, it's amazing. Are you guys? Is, is you I, identical twins or fraternal twins? Yeah, we're identical twins. Are there parts of him that you're like, oh my god, that is me? Like that's just, and are, are mm. like feel like a completely different person, or do you feel like some weird, some type of affinity that you only feel with him because you guys have the same DNA? All of that, all of that. We're same but different. You know, we're both artists, and it's like his artwork is is very different than my artwork but why are you the fucked up one 
I don't know. You don't know him. <laughs> no, but I've seen your artwork. So uh, I'm imagining if it's very different from yours, I can't uh, imagine uh, it's like more dark. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> well, go check it out. <laughs> it can get pretty dark. Is this like personal style different than yours? See, again, I mean, it's the same, but it's different. Like during the pandemic, I and or like right before the pandemic, I got some new glasses and then he got glasses. And then after the pandemic, we came back together and I was like, wow, we, we picked the same glasses or like we would meet each up, at, meet, meet each other at a party and we would show up and be both wearing the same fucking thing. And it wasn't planned. It just happened to be that way. So, but we're different enough. It would be interesting. Like sometimes I wish there was like another me so I could ask him like, what the fuck is our problem? <laughs> <laughs> I ask him that every day. <laughs> he probably doesn't know either. <laughs> wow. He, he asked me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well i hope you guys figure it out i hope you guys figure it out we're trying to that's what the lsd is for <laughs> <laughs> all right on that note uh, i want to thank everyone for watching please check back here every tuesday for a or almost every tuesday i should say for a oh, new tuesday. episode uh this friday we had last friday we have a interview posted with only yoli um if you mentioned dke toys tv uh on your next DKE Toys order in the notes section, you will get a free Invisible Suck Lord. Look at that. Wah, wah, wah. Um, it is just in the notes section, not in the coupon. And code people area. were saying you couldn't give those away. <laughs> He's proving <laughs> you can. <laughs> wow. Uh, we have another contest going. Um, if you follow us on, if you subscribe to us rather on uh, YouTube, um, we will be doing a drawing in the future here. For a complete set of these gold Ron English figures, a five hundred dollar value. That's cool. So anyone? Hey, yeah. If, if you're watching this on fucking YouTube when it's over, go watch my fucking potato chip reviews. They're great. They are great. Boom. I, there you go. Now I'm buying weird potato chips just because, like, I just had a Cuban sandwich and it was delicious. People have been telling me about that. I haven't had that one it, yet. It's good. The the BLT grew on me. I didn't like it at first, Gromy, but that, that Cuban sandwich was outstanding. I'll have to get those. I haven't seen them around here recently. Yeah, I think it's, you know, Lay's does their contest every year for, like, weird flavors. And I think those were the winners right. this year. The BLT oh, okay. Cuban. Yeah. That's my contribution. Great. Yeah, suck chips on YouTube. <laughs> Where are we getting suck views. chips? That's, we, you got to have your actual brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, maybe. What flavor would they be? <laughs> oh, wow. every flavor has been done man there's nothing left hmm. there's only one flavor i can think of that has never been done spooky yeah. chewbacca well that's very specific no <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's pussy and dick flavor is there really yeah which i'm gonna put those on my only fans because i can't do those reviews on you it's on instagram yeah wow because I was actually going to do a comparison. I see. There you go, right? <laughs> they did pussy and dick flavor, but not asshole. S, yes. <laughs> asshole flavored chips. <laughs> so he's going to he's gonna suck someone's dick and then eat the dick potato chip. And he's no, gonna no, compare. she's going to suck my dick. And, oh. then I'm, and she's going to tell me how it tastes. I and see. then I'm going to suck her pussy and tell her how it, and compare with the chips. Oh. I'm not going to. Who's going to eat the ass? <laughs> I'll eat the ass, no problem. <laughs> you know those chips are O's though. They're not uh, they're not regular potato chips. Oh uh, yeah. Onions. <laughs> doodle, uh, doodle rings. <laughs> See now we've really gotten you to light up here. We really we're really like anu anu, anu hole. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well on See, that. This note... is what gets me excited. <laughs> you can tell <laughs> bigger and and I'm... Star Wars. And I'm trying to end the fucking show. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> Never going to end. Uh, Never so, end. Uh, if you have any comments, you can email janky dk toys at uh, dk toys tv at gmail.com. And next week's guest is going to be barely human. So uh, we hope to see you oh, next good. week. Awesome. Thank you to the suck lord. Uh, where can we uh, check you guys out, janky and Scott? 
uh, I'm on Janky Toys on Instagram, but I'm going to cede my time actually this week to Chicken Burger Disco, uh, who does the music and all the bumpers for the show and is awesome. And I imagine if you're watching this, you're probably following Chicken Burger Disco. But if you're not, go follow him because uh, the show feels the way it feels because of his contribution to it. And he's an awesome dude. So, yeah. Thank you, Chicken Burger Disco. And Scott, Woo! where do we where do we find you? BarbarianRage.com. Sounds See you next week. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. See ya.